Good afternoon from Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. We are here today because Disney invited us out to experience the newly renovated Narcusi's restaurant with their brand new menu. Very excited. The last time that we ate at Narcusi's before it was renovated was delicious. And I can't wait to try it again. I'm here with my friend Nick, who is the theme park dad on Instagram, and he eats fish. So we are able to see some fish items. We're able to see some non seafood items that I will be eating and we're gonna have a good time. We should be here up until the fireworks. We should be able to go out on the balcony or out on the patio of Narcusi's and see the fireworks. It's gonna be a great night. Let's head on in. So just to give you guys some wayfinding on how to find Narcusi's, this is the Grand Floridian Cafe. We came from there around the lobby and we made it over here to the Grand Floridian Cafe and we're gonna exit these doors and follow this pathway down to almost the dock where the boats will lead you over to Magic Kingdom. And just on the side is Narcusi's. When we're walking over there, I'll show you guys exactly what we're talking about. So we headed out of this door and we are making our way this way to Narcusi's, which is that building right there that we can see straight ahead of us. Right next to Conk Key. On the way in to Narcusi's, we have some fresh herbs and vegetables. This is some curly kale, we got some basil here, some chives or spring onions, rosemary, mint. Uh, this might be mint, One, these both might be mint. Some more rosemary and microgreens. Huh. I don't think they use these in Narcusis, but it's interesting to see them out front. Here's a look at the menu real quick. We'll get a closer look at this when we get inside. Ooh. I've already seen some stuff. They got some zero proof cocktails too. I've already seen some stuff that I want. A mural depicting the beach. <laughs> also wanted to point out that it is roomier in here. So they have a little bit more room for accessibility and you can see there is a view of Magic Kingdom. So here is the menu for Narcusis. Everybody says that they love the shrimp and grits here. And then I'm interested in the 12 ounce prime New York strip steak. Sounds really delicious. So for this media event, they gave us a kind of like a prefix menu, but when you come here on a normal night, it is not a prefix menu. Everything is a la carte. So they've kind of like selected some items for us to have that are the highlights of the menu. All right, who's ready for some fun facts about Narcusis? I'm always ready for your fun facts too. All right. Oh, by the way, hi everybody. There's Nick. <laughs> um, so, Narcusi, what does it mean? Well, you told me earlier. I told you. I already forgot. <laughs> it means little bear yes. in the Creek Native American language, Muskogee, and then what is it named after? Why is this restaurant called Narcosi? Is there a town? There's a town uh -huh. called Narcosi, sort of near St. Cloud. Yeah. Established in 1884, still there to this day, but not a lot remains of the right. 1800s town. That's my fun fact about I'm excited Narcosi. to learn, they said that we'll learn more about that. So oh no, to they told us they're gonna tell us Disney's story oh, true. of Narcosi. Yeah. which I'm excited to hear. Right? I always love a good story. And every restaurant in in Disney has a story. Yeah, it looks great in here, by the way. I mean, the the colors are nice and calm. It's such a soothing place to eat. Feels like an upscale beach restaurant. Yeah, looking out at the water, see all of Magic Kingdom. I love it. Yeah, if you're here at the right time, you could have fireworks during your meal. So this is the white sangria, Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc, Kettle One Cucumber and Mint Botanical, Agave and Strawberry. And the beverage manager actually said that when they muddle the strawberry for this drink, they take the discard and they freeze it into an ice cube so that there's zero waste when they're making this cocktail. And there's the little strawberry ice cube right there in the middle. To all my Bluey fans out there, looks like for dessert, we're gonna be having some pavlova. So they brought me out a zero proof cocktail. This is the pink London spritzer. Lear's Pink London Spirit, Grapefruit Soda, Pomegranate Green Tea, Lime, and Mint. Oh, sourdough made here at the hotel. He said a European style wet butter. That's 
sounds whipped. interesting. Whipped. Okay, that makes more sense. They said that this sourdough takes 24 hours to make. And of course, they put a bath of ice water underneath it in the oven to give it this bubbly texture on the outside. Oh, that looks very nice. Now let's try this London, pink London spritzer, the zero proof cocktail. Oh, that's very good. It's got a sour kick to it. It does have some mint in the top, so it's kind of like very minty at the very tippy top. I'm getting a lot of lime, getting a lot of mint, tiny bit of green tea, not really tasting any of the London spirit at all. All right, I stirred it up a little bit, put the mint down inside of it a little bit further. Let's see. I'm not trying to touch everybody's bread, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. You like stir it up a little bit. It takes away some of the bitterness of the lime, takes away some of the mintiness of the mint being at the very tippy top, gives it more of a the pomegranate green tea taste. Oh, and there's a grapefruit soda. That's also adding to the, like the sourness of it. Not getting a lot of the pink London spirit still. So the idea of a zero proof cocktail is they use these quote unquote spirits that are zero proof to kind of give it the feel of alcohol in the zero proof cocktail, but there is no alcohol in it. Um, but I'm not getting a lot of taste for that. It's still very delicious. Look at how beautiful this sourdough bread is on the inside. Ooh. Look at how, yeah, no, that looks fantastic. <laughs> Look at the sponginess of it. it. Looks so good. And the crispiness of the outer shell. Ooh, give it a little squeezy squeeze. Oh, that's good. Oh man, that's some good looking bread. So after trying the sourdough bread, fantastic. Super spongy, nice, like crisp exterior. Nice crunch to it. It's the kind of bread that if you squish it, it goes crackles all up it. It was very delicious. And then the European whipped butter with the Hawaiian pink sea salt, really delicious. Like I like that butter a lot. It really added to the flavor of the sourdough bread. So for the non seafood starter that we got, we got the brisket and ricotta tortellone with parsnip, brown butter, and sultana raisins. And then they used the drippings from the brisket to form a reduction under here, and that's what that is. So this, this parsnip down here is like the, the mashed potatoes, but it's mashed parsnip. And then this is the ocean-inspired charcuterie, and that has ahi tuna pastrami right there in the center, which is interesting in itself. They kind of give you the feeling of pastrami, but they used ahi tuna. Charred octopus, and then the most interesting thing to me was down here, this is a lobster sausage. So when I asked him about it, I'm actually gonna try a little tiny bite of this lobster sausage because it sounds interesting. He said that they kind of put a little bit of everything in there. It's got scallops, it's got lobster, it's got the trimmings from the redfish, and then they mix it in with herbs. And like they had, there, He said that there was some fennel in there, so it should give it a little sausagey flavor. So I'm kind of interested to try that, see if it tastes more like seafood, more like sausage. But this is, I don't know, this is a very, very interesting charcuterie. This is very unlike me, but I'm gonna try it. This is the lobster sausage. It smells like a little bit like seafood. It's not overpowering as far as seafood goes. It tastes like a sausage. Yeah, it doesn't taste things. like seafood at all. Yeah. I think uh, you would like it. Uh, Oh, there it is. A little bit of seafood at the end of it. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to try this octopus. Some charred octopus. Didn't, uh, yeah, just charred octopus. A lot of people really enjoy charred octopus, so I'm interested to try it. Tastes like a grill. Yeah, it's not very seafood. That's pretty okay. Yeah, I like it. That kind of tasted like chicken, like barbecue chicken. Tastes like chicken. Yeah, it really did. <laughs> it tasted like barbecue chicken. That was good. I'm going to try this ahi as well. This is a seared ahi, right? Is that a sear on the outside? Yeah. So, uh, I've had raw fish one time in my life. I didn't hate it, but I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, not super seafoody. It didn't really taste like anything to me. Did you get a taste out of the, the ahi? I feel, I mean, it tastes like ahi that I've had before. I feel like that's probably the, like the fishiest flavor out of all three of them. Got a uh, lot of pepper out of it. Yes. Yeah, kind of like, yeah, like you would have like on a pepper steak or something. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't bad. I kind of got like a little bit of like a soy flavor with it. Okay, like a soy sauce yeah. on it. I can see that. It did have uh, pickled grapes on it and some radish underneath. 
I love ahi, so that was probably one of my favorites of the three. Okay. Yeah. It did. It kind of leaves me with a steak flavor in my mouth because there's so much pepper on it. Yeah. Good. It was good. I'm going to try this, uh, this brisket, though. I'm excited about the brisket. Let me get a shot of the inside of it. Oh, I'm not even showing myself. Let me get a shot of the inside of it. This is brisket and ricotta tortelloni. Oh. Oh. That is so good. That is smoky and creamy and... Oh, man. That was amazing. I want to see, I want to see Nick put this bite in his mouth. Yeah, that's real good, isn't it? That's very, very good. I'm blown away by that. Like, I know that I don't like seafood, but this is the best thing that's on the table right now. It's like so creamy. Yeah, it's creamy. It's buttery. Creamy and buttery. <laughs> Those are two words that I enjoy. I wanted to mention that the ahi tuna was a ahi tuna pastrami. I didn't get a huge pastrami flavor out of it, but I believe that's why there was so much pepper on the outside of it, to kind of give it the pastrami flavor. This is the Agave Garden, another zero-proof cocktail. Liars Agave Reserva Spirit, cold-pressed lime juice, passion fruit, papaya, green tea, and cucumber, with a little bit of spice in there, thanks to a jalapeno. Oh, I can smell it from here. All right, let's give it a try here. Okay, smells very earthy, like, fresh cut greens. That's very interesting. It tastes like an augmented whiskey sour. Okay. Yeah. That tastes like an earthy whiskey sour. That's the most interesting thing that I've had as far as like zero proof cocktails go. I'm not getting a lot of the passion fruit and papaya, but the lime juice, the cold pressed lime juice and the cucumber together, that's really good. But like the idea that it's an, aca an agave makes you think that it's gonna be a tequila flavor. But it is, it's more of a whiskey flavor. Brought out the lobster bisque, but we are missing part of the lobster bisque. Where's the bisque? Ooh, it's a secret. Oh, that's very nice. This is the lobster bisque. It is butter poached lobster, a lobster foam, vanilla, and then they used, on the menu it's listed as coral, but they said that it was lobster roe. And he said that there's a little plankton piece in here. It was made from plankton. This is gonna show my, uh, my millennial self, but plankton to me just comes from SpongeBob. Right? <laughs> the very tiny animal. Yeah, you feel sad. Why? Because <laughs> it's plankton. Oh, okay. Actually, it's kind of a jerk, so. Yeah, there you go. the heck with plankton. <laughs> and then I got the sweet potato gnocchi with lacinato kale, <laughs> clamshell mushrooms, and Palma Rosa tomato ragu. All right, let's try this sweet potato gnocchi. I'm gonna try as much of it as I can. Get some sweet potato, some mushrooms, and some tomato down here. Kind of everything here. This is great. Just imagine a nice griddled sweet potato gnocchi. The ragu tastes like, like a ragu, it's a, it's a tomato sauce. And the mushrooms just add like an umami flavor to it. Really brings a, a punch of flavor. All right, Nick. Tell me about this lobster. It was, oh, it's, it's, it's disappeared. It's gone. <laughs> it was delicious. The lobster was so fresh. Um, it's one of the best lobster bits I've ever had. I love lobster bits, so I have a pretty high standard for it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I loved it. It was buttery, it was warm, delicious, mm. creamy. Mm. Everything that you want in a lobster bits. Okay. My gnocchi was ridiculously good. The kale on top was like smoky, almost like they had grilled the kale. It added a nice little flavor touch to it. So I got the dry aged pork ribeye chop with goat cheese, potato pav, turnips, fig jus, and onion jam. The scallops have uh, made a return from the previous menu. It's a Phrygian gnocchi, which is a flour based gnocchi. And it has uh, Meyer lemon and truffle cream. Um, and then those nice U10 uh, scallops that we launch a here every day. The paella. Paella is our plant-based. Great, great decision to charred Meyer lemon and that affiliate press kind of finish it off with a green salsa verde. Redfish. The redfish is what they've come out with saying this is our this is our signature item. It's a, it's a sunchoke and potato hash on the bottom. It's topped with a Florida corn and a hominy succotash. A sweet Florida cream sauce and then blackened redfish and uh, red, pep red pepper root. Jen. Look at these scallops. This one's for you, Jen. This one's for you, Jen. <laughs> Pour one out. Wow, look at those things. Also, he said that this gnocchi was uh, flour-based. That's interesting to me. 
I am very excited for this pork chop. I'm excited for this fig jus. I think it's gonna be very good. It's starting to get a little bit dark out too. Sun's going down. We'll have fireworks soon. All right, let's try this pork chop. I got a little bit of everything on there. I got some of the fig jus, and then I got some of the onion jam too. Very good. Smoky flavor, a bit of sweetness from the fig and the onion. Also very tender too. I like it a lot. It's very good. It's also huge too. Look at that cut. I feel like I would have liked it just a little bit less well done, but still delicious. All right, what'd you think of that okay, scallop? So my microphone didn't really pick up what Nick was saying here, but basically he said the scallops were delicious and that they were seared perfectly. But he said the real star of the show was the gnocchi. And he said the interesting thing about the gnocchi is that it was made from a flour base. So it tasted more like a dumpling. He also said that the sauce was super buttery and complemented the scallops perfectly. He said that this is one of his favorite dishes on Disney property. Electrical water pageant has showed up it's kind of sad that we can't hear it though. They brought out a dessert menu for us to have a look at, but they're going to bring us all of the desserts, except for the artisanal cheese selection, just smaller versions of them. I'm excited about this pavlova. And they also have some after dinner cocktails. They're going to try to make a mocktail for us with one of the ingredients of the smoked dark and stormy, the smoked chili bitters, I think. Sounds interesting. Charred pineapple syrup. Wow. So they brought us out a zero proof version of the smoked dark and stormy. So they remove the Gosling's black seal rum. They still have the charred pineapple syrup in there. They remove the Carpano Antica formula sweet vermouth. They left in the smoked chili bitters and the fever tree ginger beer. Yes, that sounds amazing. Also, there is a column ice cube in there. So the ice cube goes from the top all the way down to the bottom. You can see if I turn, there's just one giant ice cube in there. And there's some dehydrated pineapple on the top. Oh, that is very delicious. That charred pineapple is so good. And then the clove comes in after the fact. Wow, what an awesome flavor. That is so good. It's not as like bitter as pineapple can be because they have kind of charred it out. So they got rid of some of the acidity of the pineapple but kept the sweetness in there. It's very good. It's like a like a non-abrasive pineapple juice with a little bit of clove in there. So kind of like a fall type flavor at the end of it. Almost like you're drinking pineapple juice mixed with uh, apple cider. Very delicious. So because this is a media event, they brought us a little sampling of desserts. These desserts are not full size at all. The first thing that we have is the almond cheesecake, which is a fan favorite and has been here since 1996. It's served with cherries and chantilly cream and encrusted in roasted almonds. Next, we have the pavlova, which is resting on a strawberry sauce and has some yuzu chantilly. It's topped with fresh berries and a little bit of grapefruit. The next item is the hazelnut chocolate bar, and this is their plant-based item, which is a chocolate sponge cake coated in chocolate, hazelnuts, and cassis, topped with sun butter and chocolate ganache. Then we have the pineapple bavoise, which is a shortcake that has caramelized pineapple bits in it. It is topped with a dehydrated pineapple flour with a pâte de fruit in the middle, which is just a fruit paste, and it is accompanied by a blackberry buttermilk ice cream. All right, I'm gonna try these desserts in the order that I thought they would be the best in. So the first thing that I would try or the thing that I would have ordered would have been the uh, the hazelnut, the chocolate bar. Very good. And this is the plant-based option. It has like a brightness to it. Okay, that was great. Then I would have ordered the pavlova. Let's give this guy a try. Just because I like the name of it. Pavlova. Very, very light in flavor. It's like a fruitier flavor more than anything. Let's try this almond crusted cheesecake. It was supposed to be with a cherry sauce here. Oh, that's real good. Wow. Try some of this. The last thing here is the pineapple bravrios, shortbread blackberry buttermilk ice cream. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, that's really good. And it has like a blackberry on the inside. No, no, four minutes till fireworks. We'll have to go out there. That is very good. So I have to admit, this was better than I thought it was. I need to get another taste of this because my battery died during this. That was amazing. The two things that I was gonna order were not my favorite things. Yeah, no, the pineapple thing was the best. Pineapple bravios. All right, we gotta go get our spot for the fireworks. Came outside to watch the fireworks and it just started.
can hear Epcot going off too. You can see Epcot going off over there. That was very enjoyable. Thank you to Disney for having us out. It was delicious. Everything about it was delicious. The only thing that I would change is I would like for the pork to be a little bit less well done, but everything else was delicious. Like the mocktails were so good. That little special dark and like the, what was it called? It was called the smoked dark and stormy. Yes. Fantastic. It tasted like so Christmas. Good. It did taste like Christmas. <laughs> that was the clove. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Everything was so good. My food was amazing. The scallops were uh, incredible. I definitely want to come back. I want to come back with Francie for a date night. This is like Ooh. the perfect date night opportunity. It really is. Fireworks. Wow. Oh man, those fireworks from the balcony here, like the back porch of Narcusi's, so good. Like it was really interesting to be able to see Happily Ever After and you were really able to see the shapes of the fireworks. Whereas in the park, you don't really get a feeling for every single shape that is up there. But out here, because you're a little bit further away, you get a bigger picture of the fireworks show. And it was really neat to be able to hear, there was like an echo that could happen where you were hearing what was coming off of Main Street and then what was being projected through the speakers here at Narcusi's. It was such an interesting way of hearing it too. And we could hear uh, Epcot fireworks too. Epcot Forever was happening off to our right. So all in all, it was a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.